us always excited coming back on this channel hi guys welcome back to my youtube channel my name is lola as you can see from the name of the channel my name is lola and i am a nurse i'm a mom i'm a wife i'm a friend i'm a sister and i live in the united kingdom i'm a nurse how did i did i say that or did i omit the hat or no but yes welcome back to this youtube channel if you are a returning subscriber thank you so much for coming back thanks for being loyal to this channel and for making this channel go it is because of you that i can always come back and i can always like improve on the um content that i'm creating all the time it is because you always come back to watch and you are always engaging so if you are not engaging yet i expect you to put a comment in the comment section the moment you watch comment in the comment section when you watch like share with a loved one and yes um just do every good thing about this channel tell somebody to tell somebody to tell somebody and let's get this channel growing okay then um for the set another set of people are the ones that are just subscribing probably youtube suggested this to you or a friend referred this video to you to watch thank you so much for coming and thanks for listening to your girl thanks for subscribing so if you have not subscribe before you go on okay and for the last set of people you have not subscribed why like why why <laughs> subscribe to this youtube channel okay and let us grow together okay like a few days ago i was talking to somebody and i was giving some formula about youtube and i'm like am i really the one doing these things like yes i am okay from my experience from what i've learned so far if you don't know it is actually a old ball game on its own. It's a lot of lessons to learn. And yes, I've been doing all the research, all the learning to keep this channel going, to bring awesome content to you, okay? So that you leave this page, you leave this channel a better person. So that I leave this channel or I drop the content and I am a better person, all right? So let's dig into today's video right so today's video is all about the lessons i've learned in the little years i've spent or i have been married okay i've just been married for three years going on four and i have learned some vital lessons some vital lessons that i i really care to share with you and i would not mind you also dropping your lessons in the comment section drop something that you have learned in your marriage that you think could benefit another person all right so the very first thing i want you to know is that marriage is an art and you have to learn it you have to learn it it is actually like they will say it's an institution it is something that got created it is a school that you get the um, certificate before the every single thing yes marriage is an art marriage is like a world on its own that it is not just enough to say, oh, I see somebody I want to marry for whatever reason, and then I'm married to the person. If you really care about your marriage, it is a whole life on its own that you need to learn about. You need to learn the rudiment. You need to learn what sustains it. You need to learn how it works. You need to learn what to do. You need to learn the requirements, everything that it entails for it to survive, okay? Just like your school subjects, if you want to succeed in your school subject, you have to learn it. You have to understand it. That is what I think marriage is. Marriage is something that you have to actually actively and intentionally learn about to know what it entails and to know what to do and to know what to expect and to know, you know, how to make it work because it has to work because it is, it is not just something that exists on its own. It exists on rudiment, on principles and you have to learn it so that's the very first thing i actually want to share with another person i've made my notes on my phone so if you see me flipping into my phone i don't want to miss anything because i feel like all the, all the points i have listed every single thing is vital okay so yeah the second thing i actually want to say is when you get married okay right now you know the rudiment and all when you get married a lot of things will change and a lot of things will not change okay so recognize what changed and or what changes and recognize what does not change one of the things that will change is probably your authority that you submit to okay probably before it's your dad or your pastor or your your 
whatever it is you submit to or whoever it is you submit to yes you might still submit to those people your immediate authority the person you actually have to acknowledge first is your spouse all right i'm talking to both men and women yes both of you actually have to submit to each other you have that responsibility you know to submit to each other and of course some things would not change like i said some some one of the things that will not change is your values your values might improve your values might change for better but then it doesn't have to change for who you are not if you get what i mean your purpose does not change your assignment in life does not change it might get better it might get interwoven with your spouses but then it doesn't mean that you have to change for who you are not for instance god has called you into the ministry of teaching and then probably because you're married you think your ministry is now just is, is uh, your ministry probably because your husband is in a particular ministry you have to you know be you have to change to that particular ministry you might find your calling or your ministry or your values in your spouse's values and then it gets interwoven it gets better you find a way of expressing it but then it doesn't change your core assignment because it doesn't change marriage does not change who you are marriage actually expresses who you are marriage exposes you exposes your inner innermost being the really the person that you really really are marriage actually exposes you okay yeah then the third one is one of the deadliest sentence you will ever make or one of the deadliest mindset you will ever have is to say that this is who i am i'm not going to change for anybody you saw me before you got married to me you saw me before you proposed you saw me before whatever or whoever introduced us told you about me so you know about me and this is not going to change there's actually always room for improvement change for the better that's what i mean change for the good change actually to make this marriage work change actually to fulfill the purpose of god change actually to make you know to make your spouse a better person i mean not to change them if you get what i mean but space to make a home a peaceful place to come back to change actually to be a better version of yourself you can always improve there's always room for improvement there is nobody that the moment god created you expected you actually to to come back to him that way you can there is refinement there is room for improvement there is so much you can actually you know give in terms of values to your spouse so yes change is actually very difficult you know especially probably this is the way i do this this is the way i do that and then you're now married to somebody who does the exact opposite which is actually mostly the case and that is where the friction comes from something as little as toothpaste could actually cause a lot of issues something as little as you know just arrange the clothes the way i arranged it red first followed by blue followed by white and then this is a spouse that just mumbles everything up okay something as little as that could actually cause a big rift that is difficult to solve because one person is not ready to actually you know accept the other person and let's work together to make this thing work yes so if you have that mindset of this is the way i do a particular thing no matter how little it is i beg you or i urge you to find a way of actually using wisdom to make it work i'm not saying you should actually be who you are not but you can find a better way to express yourself through the wisdom of god okay and another thing is um, there will be ad talks there will be ad things you have to talk about there will be some difficult conversations you have to make you have to say you you have to I don't, for the lack of a better word, I want to say you have to say it the way it is, but not like the way you actually feel, if you get what I mean. There are some hard talks, like you have to call a spade a spade, but not to attack the person. Now, that leads me to another thing. There are some issues that, there are some things that happen, and I've personally learned that you don't attack the person. You don't, you know, call out the person, you call out the issue. You don't attack your spouse you work as a team to attack the issue so for instance probably it is using for instance a common issue is being on the phone for a long time now you are not going to i, I have learned that if you want the best of this person you don't attack them as though you are always on your phone you don't have time for me blah 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 you know you can always work around issues like you can always okay i think i think the phone is actually a big distraction and we can 
you know now especially you know you're a growing family and all of that you need to like bond especially in a working environment you need all that time to bond together and even in a non-working environment adulthood is full of busy schedules there is hardly any time you except you're actually intentional that you have to spend with your spouse so yeah this phone is actually a big issue and i think that you know probably we can walk around the phone we can always leave the phone at dinner time we can always leave the phone at bedtime you know do a schedule that works with everybody you know try to secure okay how can we yes you want to also be social but then i think that it is actually rubbing off on the time we spend together that is a better way to communicate instead of you're always on your phone you're so insensitive and all of that so attack the issue and not and not the person okay and you know there are also some things that you have to you have to apply wisdom you have to apply the wisdom of god to 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 solve yeah so that is um another point i want to say add conversations but do it with the wisdom of god praise god hallelujah <laughs> all right so at this point if you have not subscribed to my youtube channel please do before you go ahead okay all these nuggets all these things that i have collated together okay it is actually to make this to make you learn to make me learn actually because the moment i was writing this i'm like oh so i really learned this thing like these are actually like the things i learned these are not just the things i read in books okay i actually learned them and i applied i, I it doesn't mean i learned to be hard way i applied some of them that i've read in books i applied some of them that i've, I've heard from my pastors i, I applied for some some of them that i have learned from my married friends okay and that is what um i've brought to you guys okay so if you um have not subscribed please do please do please do right let's get going another thing i want to say is don't be the only only married friend don't be the only married person among your friends okay there is that tendency especially if you're just coming out of school and probably you got married there is that tendency that you might be probably the first to get married or the first to get engaged among your friends now am i saying don't continue with the friendship by all means i'm not saying that please I'm actually a people person. I'm intentional about people. I'm getting intentional, more intentional about people. I love being a people person. I love people around me, people of value. But what I'm what 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 I'm saying is that don't the moment you're married, try to invest in friendships among married people. Because there are some conversations that if you have with your single friends, they can have that wisdom to actually, you know, advise but the truth is there are some things that they can actually they can't actually fathom you know the more there was actually a day i was in a particular church after school and pastor mrs kotila was saying this and she was like you know when you're married have married friends you know and i'm like then i was single and i'm like so kilosha was single people like what is wrong with we single people are you saying that we are not wise but now that i'm married i actually reckon with it i think that that's actually a very wise you know advice when you're married it's i can't i can't explain more than that just just invest in 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 friendships amongst married people it will help and of course people of value people of wisdom okay then another thing i actually want to say is that and also sorry sorry before i go to the next point also pray for your other friends especially people that desire to be married pray for them that god will bring their spouse in due time so that actually your there won't be that gap you know in what in, so that the friendship can actually be on the same level not only that for their heart desires to be granted as well so if you if you still have friends that you know that really matter to you or people that really matter to you and are not married pray for them pray for them keep praying for them until it happens okay then the next thing i want to talk about is that loving the other person being married to this other person is not just i love you i love you and it stays like that like i said marriage is an art you have to study the art of being married but this point is actually studying this person understanding this person understand how they want to be loved understand what they what they are who they are their assignment their value because you're actually like a helpmate you're actually a support you are marriage is essentially for companionship is for both of you to work together to achieve something in the kingdom of god because marriage is of god i am actually a big believer of that and i'm a preacher of that 
So you have to actually intentionally and actively understand this person. Like, who is this person? How do they want to be loved? Don't love them the way you think you should love them or the way you think you want to be loved. Aside studying yourself, you actually have an old person to study, which is your spouse. You have to learn how they want to be, to be loved. Now, we have like books on love languages that you can always, you know, browse, buy, read about and all of that. But yeah, love this person the way they want to be loved. Love this person after you've understood them. Love this person after you, you know exactly who they are. You know, like the Bible word for sex kind of is knowing. But personally, I feel like it is deeper than sex. It is, it is actually you knowing, sitting down to really understand what this thing is all about, you know. Like, there are some gadgets. For instance, probably the first time you bought your phone, you don't know what to do about it. You took the manual and you actually studied what, you know, what this phone is all about. The same thing with a person. You cannot actually um, work together with a person. You can actually gel. You can actually connect, you know, with a person, except you actually know the person. So you actively study the person. What are they like? What do they like? What is their... What is their weakness? You know, how can I, how can I spice this guy up when he's down? How can I spice this lady up when she's down? When she's too I I I up there, and I need her to like relax a bit. What can I do? You know, being being um you know foreseeing their needs before they actually even see that they need the thing themselves is actually love. You know, just a lot of things to learn about loving the other person. And the last but not the least that I want to talk about is trust. You can't, <laughs> you can't even survive friendship without trust, let alone marriage. Marriage, somebody that is actually in your face all the time, whether they are present or not, they are in your face all the time. You think about them, what is, what is he doing now? What is she doing now? Now, you cannot do that without actually trusting people. One of the biggest issues in marriages today is trust. And trust, I've learned, is very fragile. Very, very, very fragile. And it is very fatal. It is fragile, it is vital. And no, I meant to say trust is actually very fragile and it is very vital. Okay? You give people reasons to trust you. And you give people reasons not to trust you. So, if somebody says, I trust you, I feel that, or personally, let me talk about myself. If I tell you, if I tell people I trust you, it means I actually trust you. You cannot give me 100 and 100 and 100 reasons. You can't, she can't do this thing. She will do this thing. I trust her to the core. Okay. And the other way around, you give people reasons not to trust you. Oh, because somebody said they trust you yesterday, doesn't mean that you should ride on that and actually give them reasons uh, actually start working on the reasons why they should not trust you if that makes any sense yeah so people have reasons to trust you because probably you, are, you were consistent about a particular thing even when nobody was watching and then now they trust you you think that you can just ride on that and then start doing whatever it's actually it takes a flip of a second for people to stop trusting and once it is broken it is broken very fragile very vital and if it is broken it is very fatal like it is hard to build trust again after it has been broken so these are like the little points that i actually want to make and i think that personally i have learned i have unlearned some things in doing this video not even when i prepared in doing this video and i have relearned and i'm still learning that's why i said if you have anything you actually want to talk about that you have learned in your marriage valuable things things that you think that the other person will learn from you know will be a good thing to the society please put it in the comment section if i tell anyone that i would pin definitely i will pin it to you know to the comment section so that anybody will see it quickly and you know if you have watched all of this and you have still not subscribed please do before you go and i will see you in the next one bye